Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back, it's RJ. And today we are diving in and taking a look at a new Adidas Boost silhouette. They are calling this one the Ultra Boost PB. And to the best of my understanding, what they have done is taken the Pure Boost lineup and made it, I guess, a subsidiary of the Ultra Boost lineup. I guess taking what's great about the Pure Boost and throwing it into the Ultra Boost. And uh, let's dive in. Let's talk about them. I'll let you guys know what I what I don't like, what I do like, and everything else you guys want to know. So without further ado, let's take a look at the box and then dive into the shoe. So as per usual, when it comes to Ultra Boost, we are getting this split top black box. You've got Adidas Performance logos on three sides. Back side features the box label, a miniature performance logo. And other than that, that's about it. As with most sneakers we take a look at, the left and the right are absolutely identical. We'll go ahead and throw the right aside and take a look at the left. All right, so like I've already mentioned, we are diving into the Adidas Ultra Boost PB. This is a brand new model. Well, kind of a brand new name on a similar silhouette. They do resemble the 19s and 20s as far as the Ultra Boost go. And uh, they've got a lot of similarities, you know, both shape, price, which is kind of crazy, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But what we have is essentially a clear mesh upper from the toe box wrapping all the way to the back panel. It is seemingly one single piece, which probably stitches together back here behind this little felt back panel piece. We do have a black to white, not necessarily gradient, but almost a, a splatter look, both lateral and medial sides of the shoe. We do have gray three stripe branding on the lateral side only. Also worth mentioning, we do have a little tiny piece of weather stripping or heat transfer stripping right here on the outer side of the lateral portion of the toe box. They typically add those pieces for just a little reinforcement. This shoe may have gone through a little bit of testing and they noticed just a, a little weakness in that portion of the shoe. And it's also great for, you know, bumping up against things, running into things, dirt, rocks, whatever the case may be. And then beneath the clear mesh upper, what we have is uh, almost a layer of what kind of feels like, like a thick felt, if you will. Same exact material that they made the tongue out of throughout the toe box, lateral and medial side portions of the shoe. You've got giant perforations all throughout. So the shoe's gonna be ridiculously breathable. You know, if you're going on long runs or whatever the case may be, um, it's a great shoe for that. You know, you're gonna have a lot of ventilation and uh, you're not gonna find your feet overheating or anything like that. So if you are a runner and you're looking for something like that's gonna be solid for a 5K run, maybe a 10K, I think these would probably get the job done for you, especially in, in dry conditions. If, you, if you're running in wet weather and or off road, probably not the best you know you're probably gonna get uh, a lot of dirt dust and debris knocking up in there as well as water you know it's definitely not gonna protect you against all of the elements out there but if you're running dry asphalt light track running these would definitely get the job done again you've got that same mesh material on the tongue you have an adidas performance logo right up top and almost almost like a peachy salmon color flat white cotton laces as per usual when it comes to adidas and as far as the lacing system both sides have been pretty highly reinforced so you're not going to have any issues with you know the the laces ripping through there or anything like that you've almost got like what feels like plastic overlays on uh, on both sides of the lacing system and heading to the back panel of the shoe i already mentioned you do have almost a strip of felt back here in that same peachy salmon color like i said i really don't have almost almost a coral i think coral is probably the best way to describe it does read Ultra Boost PB right down there. And I already mentioned the Ultra Boost 19 and 20. We do have the same exact heel counter that we have on those shoes. It does read Ultra Boost down here. I'm not sure the camera's gonna pick that up because we are dealing with a translucent heel counter. So might be a little difficult to read that, but it is there. If you're not familiar with the 19 and 20, essentially they took what the heel cup was on the original Ultra Boost put a window on each side, made it a little more lightweight, but it is there for stability structure to lock your ankle in place back there and uh, definitely does the job properly. And then heading to the interior portion of the shoe, you do have little cushion pillows on both sides back here, right beneath your ankle and uh, helps lock the Achilles in place back there. I do like that those are there. If they weren't, you might have a lot of rubbing around here. I noticed a little slight rubbing, nothing that's really gonna cause like a blister, but I did get a little rubbing back here just because I typically wear ankle socks, no-show socks, I'm used to it. But 
it is there, so be aware if you do wear short or low cut socks. As far as the insole goes, same exact thing we're used to seeing on the 19s and 20s, boost branding right below your heel. And heading down to the midsole, we do have a full length boost material midsole. If you're brand new, ton of comfort, very responsive, probably the most comfortable cushioning system out there as far as sneakers go. As far as the color goes, you do have a gradient black to white right there on the boost. And this is kind of like a, a trend that Adidas has been running with, with all of the latest running silhouettes that they're releasing. You've got a lot of blacks, a lot of whites, and a lot of that coral showing up in pretty much the entire lineup if you check their uh, check their website right now. As far as the shape goes for the midsole, very, very, very reminiscent of the 19s and 20s so far. If I had to guess, I'd say it's the exact same shape. I might be a little wrong. So if I am and you have some facts on that, let me know. I would appreciate it. Always, uh, always okay with a little criticism. Heading down to the outsole, we do have a full length stretch web continental rubber outsole. You will see a lot of that boost material seeping through all the holes and whatnot on the bottom of the shoe. Right in the middle, we do have that torsion system or torsion fork revealing itself. If you're not familiar with that, another piece of, uh, of material that just adds stability to the shoe overall. If you are torquing the shoe left and right, it'll definitely help, uh, help lock the foot down, keep it in place, and hopefully keep you from rolling your ankles and uh, any other injuries along those lines. Now overall, I like the shoe. I think it's very comfortable as far as comfort goes. I'd probably give it something like an eight and a half out of 10. It's very comfortable, very wearable, extremely lightweight and, uh, and, and very good for running. I put a couple of miles into them before I reviewed them. And like I said, it gets the job done. It's a great running shoe. My huge quarrel is pricing. They come in at $180 USD and that's the same exact price as an Ultra Boost. I just personally feel like the knit uppers that make up the Ultra Boost are what make them unique. Pretty much what I feel allows them to charge that uh, that high price of 180 bucks. The Ultra Boost has always been 180. And I don't feel like, and maybe I'm ignorant to what goes into them, I don't feel like these materials on here cost as much as that of a normal Ultra Boost or a normal knit shoe. Again, I could be wrong. There could be a lot more craftsmanship and, and man hours that go into creating the shoe. And if there is, my apologies. That's just, if I had to come up with something, I just think they're a little steep as far as pricing goes. 140 bucks probably makes a little more sense to me. Again, that's just personal opinion. I'm not taking any jabs or shots, so take it for what it's worth. Just my thoughts as far as pricing goes. As far as sizing goes, I'd say they're a little long, but as far as width goes, true to size felt great. So if you like your shoes really snug, I would say you can try go down a half size. The good news is, is they aren't a limited shoe. They're still available on Adidas website and they have a great return policy. So if you wanna mess around with sizing a little bit, you can definitely send them back, opt out for another size or whatever the case may be. So I went true to size, I'm happy with them. I don't think I'd wanna go down uh, a half size. I think I'd probably experience a little bit of tightness in the, uh, in the toe box and forefoot area. But other than that, that's pretty much the Adidas Ultra Boost PB. If you guys have any questions or comments about this sneaker, leave them down below. I do my best to get back to everybody who does so. Other than that, I will throw these on feet right now, give you guys a better look at them aesthetically. And uh, if you're brand new to the channel, do me a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button, tap the bell notification, get an alert every single time I drop a video on this channel. Again, I appreciate all of you for watching the videos. Until next time, I'm RJ. Peace out.